Hello everyone and welcome to MBA 590 Digital Marketing and today we're going to be talking about display advertising. Uh, so we've talked a lot about search advertising already and we've talked about uh, a number of other forms of digital marketing but display advertising is basically all those forms that don't easily fall into some of those other examples, right? Um, so, for instance, you know, this definition says display advertising refers to advertising that incorporates text, logos, and pictures or images positioned on a website or search engine. So, to some extent, maybe even search engine advertising is a form of display advertising, but uh, we tend to think of them in little distinct spaces, right? Um, usually, you think of these as banner ads, right? Uh, though many of them are no longer banners, right? Now they're squares or they're integrated directly in uh, to some of your other um, advertising and, and content that you might see. Um, and this, this graphic right here, by the way, is the first ever uh, display ad. It was a display ad launched in 1994 uh, by AT&T. Uh, there was basically a display ad advertising display ads, right? So, uh, and by the way, 1994 is about the same time that the web finally becomes available to the public. So it's not more than a few you know months after uh, the web actually went up that you started to see advertising first appear on the web as well, right? So it quickly showed up after that. So why is display advertising nice? Well, like all of uh, digital marketing, it's very targeting. It's very targeted and track trackable, right? So display ads are targeted. We can often they have some of the richest information about the users because you can actually track users as they're moving around the web on advertising networks, and then use those advertising networks to kind of gain insight into what those users might be interested in. As a result, sometimes you can infer things like demographics, psychographics, web behavior for sure. Right? But you can also look at things like what kind of technology they're using. You can obviously look at what the day and the time is, how fat, what their connection type is. Are they on a mobile device? Are they on a um, desktop device? Um, you could potentially, depending upon who's running the ad network, like if Facebook is running it, you might even have knowledge about friendship connections for the individual. Um, and you might have knowledge, of, and like in a lot of the Google cases, you actually know, they know about the blog that's actually hosting it or the YouTube video that's hosting it, and they can display contextual advertising that fits with that. Um, all of the interactions with display ads are often tracked, right? So impressions and clicks obviously are easily tracked, but then you can actually track on the other end post-click actions. Uh, and this is something Google Analytics makes very easy to do because they allow you to both use their tool to track the analytics as well as display uh, the ad to begin with. Um, and you can track how many unique users are reached, for instance. But <clears throat> it's always important to realize that this all only makes sense in the context of making sensible, effective business decisions. So, right, they should only be looked at within that space. You shouldn't be tracking numbers that aren't helping you make better business decisions, is what I'm trying to say. So what are the goals of display advertising? Well, the goal of display advertising um, is similar to other um, goals of many other advertising, but because of the fact that they're kind of like the billboards of the internet, uh, they have a unique set of goals, right? So they can build brand awareness, they can help you try and establish your brand, they can actually create demand and satisfy demand, right? So you can have an, a, a, an ad that's very compelling about a particular feature, a particular aspect, and that can create a demand for that product. But at the same time, the person can click right through and make the actual purchase, which is nice because it means display advertising is one of the few forms of advertising that actually both um, creates the need for the product and fulfills the need at the same time. It can drive direct response and sales. Um, online advertising, right, is able to drive those instantaneously. Um, it, the user can immediately go from an advert for a merchant to a single click to making the purchase. Uh, because of the nature of all the online activities that happen on the internet as well, this makes it very easy to track what's going on and when they have made the purchase, when they haven't made the purchase, and really understand the situation. Now, there are a number of different payment methods that exist out there, right? So, for instance, um, some advertising is driven by CPM or cost per mill, where advertisers pay per a thousand impressions of the ad. There's CPC, cost per click, where advertisers pay every time someone clicks on the ad. CPA, which is called cost per action or cost per acquisition, where advertisers pay uh, for every customer acquired, right? So, and this doesn't have to be an actual purchase. It could be, for instance, signing up for an email. It could be making the actual purchase. It could be a number of different things along those lines, right? And then there's flat rate advertising, where advertisers pay a set pre-agreed fee for a limited amount of time. Uh, so they say, you know, here's $10,000 and we get all the advertising on this particular spot for this entire month. 
And then CPE, which is cost per engagement. So advertisers pay for every engagement with the ad. So some of these ads will actually do things like blow up and play movies or allow you to play a game or something like that. Um, and they will actually, uh, they'll pay for that rather than actually the click-throughs to the purchase. Now the advertiser rarely actually has control over which of these payment models is going to be used. A lot of times that comes down to the publisher, uh, which takes into account the advertising type and other factors such as the popularity of the site. So in some of these cases, certain things favor one example or the other. So for instance, CPM really favors the publisher, right? Because they don't have to pay if they use, they, they get paid regardless of whether the user is actually engaging with the ad. Whereas CPA is something that favors uh, the advertiser, right? Because they only have to pay if the, the goal is actually achieved, if their KPIs are actually increased, right? A lot of high traffic, broad audience websites, uh, premium and booked media like New York Times or Washington Post, they will typically offer CPM because they can get away with it, essentially. They, get, they have the authority and the, um, and the draw, draw of the consumers to get away with it. Um, Yahoo, CNN, some of these also examples of cases do that. Um, niche websites are much more likely to operate based upon cost per action or cost per click. Um, and you know things like affiliate marketing, which we've talked about before, often operates in this space as well. Um, you know, some of these types of advertising can seem a little bit more intrusive to less intrusive, right? So, like when the when they when they pop up or when they do different things, right? Um, and if that's the case, right, then you might see more of a movement toward favoring the publisher over the advertiser. Uh, regardless of this, when planning a campaign, it's important to know how the advertising will be paid for, so you can understand what's driving. Uh, the the actual revenue model, right? The cost model for the the marketing campaign.